Okay guys, I'm gonna get started here on my eight by 10 pre-stretched canvas with my image already laid out. As you can see, I've got wax transfer paper and of course the stylus that I use to trace that out. And again, you can find this trace bowl down in the description at the Patreon link if you'd like help with the drawing. So I'm gonna get started with my number 12 angle brush here. And this is so that I can use the very tip. And I'm gonna start with the cross here because it's a dark uh, value of color. And I want to get this in first, that way when I go in with my sky, even if it comes over this just a little bit, it's I'm still going to be able to see it and I'll be able to cover back over it with the dark values. So that way I don't lose the traceable on this when I start doing the sky over everything. So to get started on my palette, I have some permanent black, raw umber, burnt umber. This is violet, some light magenta. A little bit of phthalo blue, which I may or may not use, but I'm only having it here just in case. Uh, I think I will use some of it, actually. And then I've got magenta red, cad yellow, cad orange, and then, of course, titanium white, as always. So, again, I'm going to start off with the cross here. So, I'm going to take a little bit of this burnt umber here. I'm sorry, raw umber. I always get these two browns mixed up. I always say burnt when I mean raw and... Anyways, it's the darker brown, so that's the raw umber. And a little bit of this burnt umber to it. And now, just a little bit of black. I want to just darken this. See, just a little bit, so it's not pure black. So it's really just a much darker brown with a little bit of this burnt umber into it, just to give it more of that brown hue to it. Okay, so just kind of wiggling and pulling it through. And it gives it that nice sharp tip on it. Okay. And let's just start off. I'm going to go, like I said, with the cross first. And I just realized that saying the cross first. It's very profound. Always put that first in your life. It's, if you do, everything else you do will fall into place. I promise. So that's for someone, for all of us, in fact. Okay, so look, I'm just using the tip of it. And I can get these nice, precise edges and just kind of do this to kind of establish those lines. And then I'll use the entire edge of the brush here. So you just kind of like that. And I think I'm just going to touch right here because it is the same length. And I'll even go up like this if I need to. Okay, just something like that. I don't want to really go outside my lines really too much at all because with a dark value, it's going to be a lot harder to cover it up with these lighter values I'm going to put down for the sky. And it just more or less gets in the way that like that. So I really want to be careful here to start off with. I really want to stain these lines. That's why I recommend this angle brush. It's super awesome for getting very precise and staying in your lines really well. That tip, I tell you, that point, that edge, really allows you to really get in here and not make a mess of things and keep everything intact like this. So I'm just going to fill this in. This is just the general base color. And so as you know, with acrylics, this is not the final color and it's not, it's not going to be detailed at first. I'm just getting just the base colors for now. That's the way you want to do acrylics is just get the base color and as we get more into this with more layers, I'll go ahead and change values of color and I'll build on top of this. And we'll really start to bring out the final colors and details the way they should be, laying where they should and playing the way they should with other values to bring out this really magnificent, glorious cross and the sunlight that's gonna be zinging in behind it, lighting up the sky, of course, behind us and all that good stuff. So as you can see, I'm using the full edge of the brush now not just the tip of it, because I can get this nice line going all the way down. Okay, and even if you do get a little bit of a sway, it's all good, because maybe you've heard an old hymn, The Old Rugged Cross, and it's okay to have some character to it and detail in that way. Maybe it's not perfectly straight. So you might have a little bit of a some wood realism that way, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. But you just kind of get it close. No big deal. And see up here, I'll kind of 
straighten that out a little bit so you can see I kind of took that there was a little curve there and I was able to straighten that up and take that out okay just now I'm just using the very tip of the brush here just getting that final little corner here to come together okay something like that and I'll just use this whole brush in fact to just block it all in perfect brush for doing this Okay, and as the brush gets kind of worn out as far as the paint goes and getting, you know, down to the last bit, you want to reload it again. So I'm just going to reload and it brings it back, the bristles back together again so they're not fraying out on me and I can come in there and keep my precision alive and just really make sure that this doesn't get outside these lines very much. Okay, just like that. And... Just kind of doing this. Okay, no big deal. A little teeny bit of a spill out there. All good. I can kind of fix that a little bit it may happen but I can tell you if I'm not using this brush and I'm using another brush that doesn't have all the bristles intact this will become so much worse I'm telling you it will really get out of, uh, get out of hand on you so even if it does do a little bit of spill at least it's very minimal and you can always work with it and it's all good so I'm not gonna worry about down here I'm just gonna sort of just kind of leave that for now Okay, because I'm going to fill that in down here with a dark value, of course. So while that dries, I'm going to start over here and just really just block in the general colors of the sky. And I'll get to all of the details and the cloud effects and all that as I build up on top of the base color that I'm going to put. Okay, so I have here, just to show you guys, a cleaning jar. And it has all these pegs, that rubber pegs that are all raised up in different sizes and thicknesses and that helps to knock the paint off the brush. I love this thing because I can just do this, just kind of go like that. And then I recommend also after your cleaning jar, whatever you choose to use, you can use a regular jar like this instead of the one that I have and give it one more final rinse because by that you don't get your, you don't get dirty water into your new colors and contaminate them that way and see that keeps your other water clean too. So it really just ensures that every color that you dip your brush into isn't going to carry any of that dirty paint water in and, of course, get a color that you don't want, especially light colors. Now, I'll tell you, anything that's dark or that was dark, you get that dirty water into it and that light value will just not be very favorable in that way. So definitely don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here. And like I said, while this dries, because what I don't want to do is bring the colors in and have it mix with all of this dark color that I put in here and then drag that into where it's going to be light values playing. So while that dries, I'm going to be over here first and I want to go with some of this violet. And this is my number 10 flat brush here that I'm going to start with. It just helps to cover more ground and it is a fairly new brush. So I have these nice bristles and edge that I can get on it and stay within, you know, parameters just fine with that, and I think I'm gonna get just a little phthalo blue into that a bit. See, you can see it changed the value just a teeny bit. And I'm just gonna sort of do something like this for now. Just kind of up in here. See, it's not by any means the final color at all. And I'll just block this in for now. Okay, and actually, you know what? I'm going to add just a little bit of this raw umber to it because I just want to dull it down just a little bit. See, if I do this and then bring this onto it like that, and now just a teeny bit of titanium white. 
that actually changes it up a little bit. And let's see, I think something more like, maybe something like that. And I'll tell you what, sometimes mixing color is uh, kind of an experiment. So you kind of want to just see what you can get as you kind of roll along here. So a little bit of this light magenta into it. And there we go. Something more like this is what I'm looking for. So that worked out pretty good. I did see a little dulling of the colors and I wanted to get that dull in there. But then at the same time, adding this light magenta is what sort of sparkled up the color just a little bit more. So you can see the different values now before when I started, it was more of this purple color and I didn't want purple. And then I dulled it with this raw umber and as you saw, it was a little too dark. So now I'm sparkling it up with this light magenta and that is really giving me something now that I really want. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, so that's a little bit better here. More of what I was looking for. So. If you don't have the exact colors or maybe your color isn't exactly like mine, it's all good because again, this is just base color and I'm just trying to get the general uh, layout for everything. And you know, as acrylics goes, that first coat is never your final color and it's never the final detail. If you try to do that all at once, I'm telling you, it's gonna be frustrating because it won't do what, you're, what, what it's supposed to in that first layer. But the cool thing is, is these colors in the beginning are gonna to work to our advantage when we start to put more values on top of this. This will work with that to kind of show through and really work with that final color to really make it what it should look like and blend in well with it. So we really need this first. This is an absolute must. Got to have those base colors or it just won't do what you want it to do. Okay, so something like that. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to leave this open just a little bit. And I'm not going to worry about that just yet. So I want to take a little now titanium white. Not a whole lot, but I kind of I want this a little bit lighter. A little bit more raw umber to dull this a bit more. I don't want it super vibrant at the moment yet. Okay, something like, maybe something like this. Okay, just sort of mixing that up and stirring it up with my brush here. And then just tapping as I pull down, just to kind of get the paint into the bristles. And let's go something down here. So see, it's a little different value now change there. As we get towards the horizon, things get a little bit lighter. And of course, the way the clouds play and the sunset and the way that everything is hitting, colors tend to change up. Okay, so I'll get some more of that paint. And you know, as it gets dry too, I'll just go ahead and do this. I'll, I'll take just a teeny bit of water, not a whole lot. See, I'll tap off the excess and that really helps the paint to flow much better. See in Hawaii where it's a little bit more wet and humid, I don't have to use a whole lot of water all the time, but maybe if you live somewhere like Utah where it's super dry, then you may have to use more water at times and more often, which is fine. So just kind of figure out for where you're at and your location, if your environment is telling you if you should use you know, more or less water or not, just depends. So. Find your consistency. You don't want to use too much water because if you do, it'll thin the paint too much. Even with that little bit of water, you can see the little breaks in here, but no big deal. Again, this is our first coat and we'll come back in there and make this more full and saturated and all that good stuff. Okay, a little bit more water to my brush as the paint gets down and low. See, like that, I'm kind of running low on that mixture I made. And I'll just kind of take this out. See, with a little bit more water, it flows much better like that. Okay, and do my best to go around this cross. Not really worried about it because in the end, after I do my entire sky when it's all done, I'll come in here and take care of all the out of bounds and go back over with dark. Because as you know, in acrylics, when you take a dark value over any other value, like, you know, especially lighter, this will definitely cover over the first coat. So I'm not really worried about 
getting back over this uh, right now. It's all good. Okay, I'll just take this down and just sort of do something like this, okay? So now I wanna take a little bit more white. Okay, I want this a lot brighter and over here, it's gonna be a lot lighter lavender color. Okay, again, not worried too much about getting into that. Again, I'm all, it's all good. No big deal, man. <laughs> so there's that. I'll even throw some of that in here for some cloud stuff, which I'll come back in and knock back and cover over whatever I don't like. I'm just gonna sort of run the paint off in here. Just, just whatever, however you wanna do that. Okay, I'm gonna clean this brush now. I'm going to my rinse jar now. And, and I'm going to go down now to a little bit smaller brush. Now I've got my number six flat brush here and I'm going to take a little bit of this cad yellow. And I think with that, just a touch of this cad, or I'm sorry, light magenta into that, uh, maybe a little bit more. I think something like this. See, so it's kind of this orangey color here, which is just fine. And I think I'm gonna go something like this. Okay, just kind of fill this area in. Okay, just not worried about anything right now. No details, who cares about details? I see in this area, it's mostly this color, you know, with some changes, but we'll get to those changes. Okay, just kind of fill this in. Okay, and I'm just, I'm not really worried about how formal I'm being with the brush. You can see I'm just getting it on there. I'm just whatever, you know what I mean? Just stirring it up in there, laying her down and Letting it be however it's going to be. Okay, I'll even get in here with some of that. Why not? Why not? Okay. So now, I'm not going to clean this brush. And I'm going to take now a little bit of this cad orange into that. And I'm going to take a little burnt umber to dull that orangey color down a bit. See, like that. And now I'm going to wipe most of that color off my brush. I got a little cloth on my table here that I'm using. And now I'm going to take some titanium white. And maybe something, well, let's see. Maybe a little bit more yellow into that to warm that up just a bit more. I'm thinking something like this. This kind of warm, peachy color. So you got that burnt umber some orange and yellow. Now, careful with this orange, it will take over everything if you're not careful. So just a little bit of it, and you want more yellow, and you want just a little bit of this burnt umber to sort of dull it down a bit so it's not so vibrant, and it gives more realistic look to it that way. Okay, so like I said, that warm peachy color, and let's throw that in right here. Okay, so again, not worried too much about how formal with the brush I'm using, just really throwing it on there. And I'm turning the brush, see, against the, and I recommend that if you want to help stay in your lines a little bit better. But even if I go, oh, I got into my cross, man, what am I going to do? Uh, no big deal. Because I know where it's at, see? So that's why I started with the cross first, because if you put the cross first, anything in life that gets in the way of it, man, you'll still be okay, because you can still see where you need to be. Know what I'm saying? So <laughs> here we go. Just gonna fill this all the way down here like this. No big deal. I'll cover that up later here in a minute, or you know, maybe a few more minutes. And I'll just sort of blend this up a little bit. See, just a little bit of pressure on my brush and I can just sort of dust this up. Just sort of stir that up into this light lavender color. And you just get a Kind of get that nice gradient there going. Okay, so I'm not going to clean my brush again. I'm going to wipe most of that color off my brush pretty much with my cloth. And now what I want to do is take this and now a lot of white. 
I want it really, really bright. Okay, a little bit more yellow to that. Okay, right in here. So it was this little bit of peachy color and a little bit of yellow, mostly titaniumite. You can see how light we're going now. And let me throw this right here and I'll even drag it out into some of that lavender a little bit, having it come into it. Because this sky, man, is gonna be awesome. We're just gonna like have all these things playing together and blending into one another and just really playing together. Okay, something like that. All good. Okay, so down here, I want more red and magenta, you know, in a sunset, if you were to look at pictures, it really has this beautiful red orangey glow happening. So with that, I'm gonna take some of this magenta red now and some of this light magenta. And I think I wanna take a little burnt umber to that. Again, that's my duller, as well as my wood, uh, some of my wood color for the cross. It's also my duller for some of these colors in the sunset. And I want more red shown now. Yeah, something like that. Now see, you just kind of mix this stuff up in its general colors. And you find, as you mix stuff together until you like what you see or the color that you're looking for, it's really a fun experiment because Eventually you will find your colors, so you just have to kind of keep going at it and really just see what happens when you do that. You can always change them. That's what's so neat about acrylics, man. There's no real commitments and anything that you have to absolutely live with. You can really do anything you want to do. So I'm just getting this red, magenta, orangey, dull color down. And I'm going to go just kind of like this. See, always adjust colors. You can cover something up if you don't like it. Oh, I got too much lavender. It's supposed to be more red and all that down here. Okay, that's fine. We'll just cover it up and do this. All good. Okay, just like that. I'll leave some of this open because I want to come back in here with some more of that sort of peachy, yellowish color and kind of have it brighter in here. So I won't cover all that up. But I will get some of that playing in here. And, you know, do something like this. Just however, don't hold back, have fun. This should be totally fun. Okay, we're going like that. And maybe a little bit over here maybe on the horizon. Just a little hint of that, just a little sneaking like so. Okay, so there it is, something like that. And, you know, let's throw this around however. Okay. And now up here, I want to put some of that, and I'll just sort of stir this up a bit. See, right where these two come together, I can just come in here like this, flip the paint, uh, the brush over when the paint runs off on one side, and I can really make use of all my paint and not waste any of it. Okay, and just kind of do this, see? And that really brings these together very nicely like that. See, now we get rid of that hard line and we show some cloud effect happening through here. See, just like that, super fun, super easy, nothing to it, and we are making magic. <laughs> so let's see. What I wanna do now, if you don't know, I've said before in my other videos, and I wanna use a natural round bristle brush to really come in here and do some really cool cloud effects with this. And this is gonna be a dry brush that I'm gonna use. So I think, let me find where I have it. Yeah, here we go. So I've got two sizes here. I've got my number six and my number four natural round bristle brush. And these harder natural bristles are perfect for getting all these swirly clouds and realistic looking effects with those. So in smaller areas, of course, I'll use the number four and more general larger ones than number six. So with that, I think I'm gonna start with my number six, to, uh, my number six to start with. And I'm gonna go now into some of these colors that I've already made. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of magenta 
a little bit uh, uh, light magenta that is because this is magenta this is the light magenta so sorry if I got a little confusing there I don't want to confuse nobody that's the last thing I want to do I want these videos to be clear and the lessons to be super on spot that anybody that especially if you've never painted you can totally follow along and really get much satisfaction out of it and be able to pull off anything that is going on in these videos that's my goal. My hope and dream is to turn you guys loose and make you really exceptional and well-rounded and give you the satisfaction and show you the joy that comes with painting. It's so neat. It's so awesome. It's a world of its own. And I'll tell you what, I just, I'm so thankful to God that he provides the way that he does for us to be able to enjoy life like this. Okay, so not taking anything for granted, <laughs> being thankful always, and just getting this yellowish sort of, you know, hint of some of that light magenta in there and some titanium white. I kind of want to sparkle this up. Yeah, something like that. Maybe a little bit more yellow to get it maybe a little bit more vibrant. And I apologize, it's the uh, rain. It rains a lot in Hawaii out of nowhere. It just like pours like crazy. So we may hear some of that rain. I hope it is soothing though as we do this. Okay, so I got that color on here. And again, uh, not very much paint on the brush. And it's a dry brush because what I'm gonna do is just kind of come in here and do something like this. See that? You can really get these nice cloud effects like this. And that really makes for some really cool stuff in that way. And so just like that. Okay, so just kind of work this however. And it's all good. Just kind of hitting some of this again. And I'll come in here with different values. I'll play these around till I like what I see. So with that. I'm not going to worry about cleaning anything. I'm going to take some more now, this violet color, and I'm just going to sort of tap off a lot of that paint. Yeah, and then right in here, just kind of want to do this, stir this up a bit. And the thing is, too, if you have some color on your brush that may be a little bit more than you want, always start where you want to paint the heaviest first and where that color is mostly going to be. Because what will happen is as paint runs off the brush, you're going to go into the areas where you only want it a little bit and you want it to fade off. And that'll be very easy to do as you get down on your paint with the bristles as there's not much paint left on them. It'll be easy to just kind of blend that down and fade that off into this... So see, I started up here because I wanted this really heavy and then down here, just more faded like this. Okay, just kind of something like that. So see, we get these nice cloud effects going in this way. Okay, all good. However, and again, if we don't like something, if something's too heavy, we can take another value as it dries and we work on other parts of the painting. We'll come back and you can always cover back over and do the same thing. And this time maybe not load as much paint on the brush. And it's really a learning process. You get the feel of it over time and it gets easier. But again, even if, if, if this is your first time and you've never really done much of this, still very forgiving i'm telling you you can like i said come back and work stuff back over that got out of hand and you really can fix anything at any time and you always have the opportunity to learn and it's like never too late like oh i guess i'll learn that next time kind of thing like no you can learn it this time never ever too late it's super forgiving you can do whatever you want anytime okay so i'm just working this back over as you can see there and just kind of blending back and forth using these cloud effects. And this is what's gonna build this up and really take off. And this is super freestyle. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine, but you get the general idea. And just work this around and have some fun. So 
So you know, I'll even do something like this. You know, kind of where these things come together and see something like so. And I'll work some of that into here even. And as you come to the cross, I would go over into it just a little bit because one thing you don't want to do is try to stop at the cross because it tends to leave a gap. And I don't know, it may not look like, you know, like a completed picture maybe in the end if you do that. So like I said, you can always take the dark value and we will and cover back over all this mess that goes into it. But by the time we do, we really want to have everything look solid and have the cloud and the the sky really be behind it and not look like it was something that we painted around it so definitely don't be afraid to go into it and again I would go a little bit into it just for that reason okay let's do some along this line here so now we're really starting to see maybe some things happen here okay now I don't need to clean and I'm gonna go back in now and I'm going to take, once again, this magenta red color here, and I'll take a little titanium white. See, just kind of like this. And I'm just tapping. Okay, not a whole lot of paint. And let's see, I can come in and I can even do something like this and show some wispy action. See, I'm just kind of wisping it out. Just kind of stir, then just kind of looks like the wind's been howling on these things, maybe a little bit, and then that's coming in for the sunset, or maybe this is a sunrise. Actually, you know what I want for me personally, and you can make your painting and tell your story. However, I like the idea of a sunrise because sunrise is like the beginning of the day, and it's starting with the cross. And for me, I always start my day off prayer and reading the Bible and stuff like that. It just it's what sets my focus and what works for me to live my best life and to each their own you know I'm not trying to preach at anybody by any means I just all I can do is share my life the way it really is and not try to share you know I don't I'm not here to share a belief system or you know what people taught me to think and all that this is purely my experience in my own life and it's why I do what I do. So, I don't know, for me, and the way I express my painting in this is that, yeah, I'm gonna call it for me a sunrise. Just because, again, it shows that I'm starting my day off with the cross, with God first in my life and all of that, so. That's me, that's just me. So, look, at I can even put some of that color up in here as well. And I'll tell you what, I kinda wanna get more of this pinkish, you know, magenta color involved up in this darker. It really pops off of there really well when I do that. So watch this, it's just, see that? It just kind of makes it more vibrant. And I'm just sort of dancing this in. And again, a dry brush, because if this is wet, you just kind of sort of get this um, sort of uh, painterly, you know, brush stroke effect instead of a cloud effect, if that makes sense. So definitely want a dry brush when you want to make clouds with these brushes. So, I'll just come in like this. See, we got some cool things happening like that. And I'll just kind of, I don't know, however, again, this is your painting. You can do whatever you want with this. And put your colors however. There's no right or wrong. I mean, heck, it's a sunset and or sunrise whatever you want to call it. I'm always so quick to go to sun sunset before that I say sunrise because in a lot of paintings that I've done, you know, where the sun's hitting the clouds and all that, it's it's uh, just automatic for me to think of the sunset. But again, I want to call for me personally the sunrise, as I said. So let me just try to figure out if I can say that right from now on. <laughs> so... Yeah, something like that. Getting those little pink clouds to show up in a way like that. Okay. And let's see. I'm going to add now just a little bit of orange to that. So a little cad orange. And 
a little bit more of this light magenta to it. See, orange will really take over if you put too much of it. Okay, something like that. And I think I'll go... Yeah, something like that. It's really getting vibrant in here. I love it. Okay, really starting to fill in some stuff here. Okay, so we just kind of go back over some of this and really just start to bring this out. And I'll tell you, this is very effective. These natural round bristle brushes. I highly recommend these type of brushes when you're doing clouds or fog because it really, it really is super effective in getting that realistic cloud look to really happen in your painting when you're doing this. So, see, so just doing this stir up motion like that okay and right in here too just something like that okay something like that and i want to come in here now and let's see I want to get a little bit more yellow into that and now more titanium white. Okay, so it's kind of this, I don't know, sort of yellowish kind of peachy color in a way with a hint of some of that magenta in there a bit. Okay, and What's cool with these two is I can load a little bit more paint like I did on this, and you can still use them to sort of paint with like that instead of always drying like this. So these are very good brushes. You can really use them in many different ways. I love it. Okay, maybe a little bit down in here. So a little bit. So as I get a little bit smaller down towards the horizon, this is what creates distance in the painting as well. So it looks like these clouds are further away, and we're looking out into the distance because. Again, if you have all the clouds the same sizes, kind of just kind of, you know, you lose that depth in there. And one of the things I think is really special and really awesome about a landscape is if you can create distance. There's just something about a painting that seems like you're looking as far as the eye can see when you're looking at it. It just really does something like, wow, dude, I can't believe that's a painting, man. I'm looking at something very, uh, really far away. And it's just so cool to look at. And it's not so flat and boring that way too. Okay, so something like this. And okay, maybe something like so, and it's gonna be a lot lighter in here. So see that's Just sort of dancing that in there. However, I'll come in there and I'll adjust it up a bit. Let's see again, I'm going into the cross just a little bit because when I do a dark value, I want everything to be solid and not look like it was painted around the cross. So those, those little things, just little things, they really make all the difference in how this is gonna look in the end. So what seems really mundane and all that, no big deal. Well, it makes a big difference, like I said. All right, so you can see here it didn't get covered as well there. That's all right. And right in here. Okay, maybe something like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean this brown natural brush off. And again, I go into my cleaning jar, and then I want to give it a nice final rinse so I don't drag that dirty water into my clean paints, especially light values because that'll really contaminate those. Okay, so I'm going to start, I'm going to continue on here and I'm going to take my smaller natural realm bristle brush, this number four guy here, and I'm going to take some titanium white and just a teeny bit of this 
cad yellow. Yeah, not much. I really want this really, really light. Okay, and again, I'm tapping off a lot of that paint. I just want a little bit. See, I'll go back in. I tapped off maybe a little too much. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go up here. Just kind of brighten this up a bit. See, that kind of sparkles things a bit. And I don't want to cover all this yellow up, but just kind of in the middle. See, it just really gives it shine and pop a little bit like that. See, and it makes them come to life a little bit, uh, come to life a little bit more. And just loading up the paint again. I can sort of blend this in to that other stuff there. Something like that. All right. Okay, and I don't need to clean, and what I wanna start doing is, I wanna take some of these darker values now of violets. So I'm gonna take some more of that uh, raw umber, some of this uh, violet here. See, and I just want to tap it off, tap it off just a little bit. And again, this is my number four, my smaller natural round bristle brush. And I want to come in here and I want to get this darker shadow involvement and in some of this cloud effect here. This is really going to start to build up depth and dimension and some more cloud stuff. So see, just like this. Sort of work this in a little bit and we get these little things and that really makes all the difference on how interesting these clouds will look and just the depth and the dimension like I said and just the 3d effect that I want to make and the impression that I want to give these clouds as realistic looking clouds so see like that that really starts to add some stuff into that Okay, grabbing more paint here, and I want to go around this guy. See this magenta color that I got going on in there. And maybe a little bit in here. A little bit bigger up here, because I want to get that depth and dimension, or depth and distance. Okay, something like so. Okay, running out of paint a little bit on the brush. Let me grab a little bit more. Loading that up. Okay, just so however, it's, it's all good. There's no right or wrong. Just really just play this in and do what you like to see and put things where you want them to be. I think around, around the cross though, it's gonna look better if I do lighter values because there's gonna be sunlight that's zinging in through here. And of course, where that sunlight's coming in, these lighter values are really gonna contrast against these dark values and really show a realistic sky and just where the sun's coming in and how it realistically lights up an entire array of colors within the clouds and all that. So definitely keeping that in mind as I apply these dark values and where I wanna put them. So let me get now just a little bit of this light magenta now involved. And okay, and so let's see, right in here. Kind of want to clean this up here where it looks a little washed out. Seeing that just sort of changes it up a bit. Okay, maybe something like that, and and let's see where I want to put this now is, let me just sort of work that in, 
I don't know, wherever. However, wherever, always adjust it if you don't like something. It's all good. Okay. All right, so let's see. I wanna get now a little bit of some white, a little bit of this magenta in there again, more white. See, so just kind of something like this. And I kind of want to just do something like this, maybe, with this lighter value. something like that maybe and I want to go now a little bit of cad orange and maybe a little bit of yellow a little bit of magenta and I'll just see kind of taking all these colors and see if I get a little white into there and something maybe like this yeah something like that let's see what I get with that is I go back over see and I can just sort of do these little things have all these nice little streaks in here something like that okay so what I want to do now is I want to get some dark values in here just like I did over here but put them in and to do that I'm gonna take now some raw umber I'm sorry see I did it again burnt umber <laughs> the lighter more vibrant brown and let's go with a little bit of cad orange into that Okay, so it's something kind of orangey brown, a little darker like this. Okay, and then I'm thinking something in the midst of these colors here. I'll play this in. And again, using my number four natural round bristle brush and no water on the brush, very dry. And I'm going to work this darker value in now. And you can even use your finger and sort of do this and blend it out. Finger paint is definitely okay. Don't be afraid of that. <laughs> you can always, always wash your hands. It's all good. But it definitely works really well to blend stuff too when you use your finger. It's actually pretty effective, believe it or not. Um, so I do it actually quite a bit. Especially when I'm doing clouds and all that. It works really well. Maybe just sort of something like that, maybe. And maybe up in here a bit. Okay, just something like this. And be a little bit of that over here, I'm thinking. See, that really lines these clouds really nice when you do this kind of stuff. Super effective, really cool. OK, 
Okay, maybe something like that. And then what I want to do is add just a little bit of yellow now to this color that I'm already using. Maybe a little bit more white. Okay, maybe something like, I don't know, let's see. More yellow maybe to warm that up. And a little bit more white again. So I think it's something like this maybe. And I kind of want to just sort of do something maybe like this. See, it just kind of changes it up a bit, it gives it more variety and more depth and all that. Okay, and I'll just sort of blend this up a little bit, very little pressure on the brush, just sort of stirring that up a bit and just bringing that up. Okay, and just send it again, using my finger to sort of blend over. See, just a little bit of things like that. Okay, and I'll put some of this color in, just here and there, but not everywhere. Letting these other values play along and see, this is kind of wowed out and it's kind of too, some of this dark stuff that I did. So watch, I can put this light value on it. I can just kind of go over it just very lightly and look at it, just really settles that down nice in there. See that, it just makes it more natural looking. Really cool. Maybe something like that maybe. Okay, I'm gonna clean this brush again. All right, I'm gonna go back to my number six natural round bristle brush. And what I'm gonna do now is take a little bit of cad yellow and I'm gonna take now some more titanium white. So this is a very, very light color. And what I wanna do is go in here and really, actually, let me get a little bit more yellow than that. Just a little bit, see, yeah, something like that. I don't want it too white just yet. And again, I'm kind of going into the cross a bit on purpose because I want it to look more full. And See, just sort of, the other thing too you can do is if you have too much paint on the brush, don't use very much pressure on it, very light pressure, and you can still get that nice cloud effect, you know, like that. And that's all good. Okay, so I want it very, very bright up in here. And I won't cover up all this dark stuff, but I want a lot of it pushed back a little bit. Just kind of something like this. And I'm going to come down here and really just, I'll leave some of this dark in here. Just a little bit though. Not much. I really want this to really bright and shine and, and all of that, so. Okay, kind of something like that. Just kind of knocking back some of this darker value of this violet that I brought in. And see again, I can just take that and really just do anything I want to do here. See, so just kind of leaving some of this dark stuff to show just a little bit. I'm also using this light value to sort of settle down some of this. Okay, something like that. Okay, so again, just sort of settling down some of this darker stuff. And it 
looks a little bit more natural and blended in with the clouds. Looks uh, a little bit better that way. More realistic and all that. Okay, just kind of getting those hard lines out of there a little bit. Okay, so something like that. And now here's what I want to do. I want to clean this natural uh, bristle brush off. Get all that sort of yellow out of there. And what I want to do now is I want to take my little brush, the little round natural bristle brush, the number four, and I want to take now some violet and a little bit of this raw umber to it. Okay, let's clean that off. I want to get some more of this white. And I want this very, very light color now. Okay, very light lavender. And I want to drag some of this over. Just very light pressure with the brush. I want to I want to really take this out. Sort of blend this into that yellow stuff just a little bit. See like that? And it kind of shows the light sort of carrying on into this lavender as I change the color of it a little bit into this light lavender color and it shows the light playing in here that's coming from over here. So it doesn't look like there's a separation of all of a sudden there's no light. You know, we want the light to travel, but of course the color to be maintained within the color that the clouds are to really show the light infiltrating throughout the whole thing. So again, values of color, they really tell your story when you change your color values up and place them together in such a way that really tells us what's going on. So with that said, let's I'm gonna go out here with that. Okay, and I'll even take some of that right in here. See, so sort of blending this together a little bit now, bringing the picture together a little bit more. And I really want to have some light playing out here as well. Seeing all these things, they really take off and happen like this. Okay, and maybe some out here. Yeah. Okay, something like that. So now I'd like to drag just a little bit of that color back onto my brush, see, so it's not so white, not so light. See, just tap, 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 and I'll come in around here and sort of do, I don't know, play this in there with this as well. Leaving some of these darks though. Don't want to cover up all those darks. Those are like some really good friends of mine. And I hope they're your friends as well because that really just adds, it keeps the depth and the dimension alive that way. You really want that. So definitely don't want to cover all that up. Okay, so now I want to take a little bit of darker value now. I want to go raw umber and more of that violet. Yeah, something like that. And let's go back in and really bring in some more of this dimension here. Um, I can come in like this. Let's see and place some of these in here. And I can... See, something like that. Super cool stuff. Anything you want to do anytime. Never committed to any one thing. You don't have to live with anything that you don't like. You can always change it. All good. Super duper okay. Okay, so I might just make this one a little bit darker here. See, and sort of blend this out a little bit maybe. 
Okay, something like that. And let's see. I think what I'm going to do is now take a little bit more of this regular magenta, a little bit of light magenta, and just a little titanium white. Let's see what I get with that. Maybe a little bit more of this other magenta here. A little bit more of that. Yeah, get more of that red involved now. Okay, see, just tapping a lot of that paint off the brush. And I really just want to come in here and really make this stuff a little bit more vibrant down in here. And, um... really capture some stuff here. Okay, and Now what I want to do is take just a little bit of orange now. I want to take now some titanium white into that. See, and again, tapping off a lot of that paint. And let's, I want to go back into here. And I kind of want to adjust, I want to adjust some of this other colors in here. Okay, now a little bit of this burnt umber. I want to dull this down a bit and again tapping off that paint just a little bit and I think I want to go something like maybe this. Okay, just a little bit more cloud action up in here. See, something like that. Just anything you want to do. All good. Again, coming in here with some of that, just sort of brushing this in a bit. Okay. All right, something like that. And what I'd like to do is take a little bit of yellow, more white, see, something like that maybe. Just kind of want this little haze color here, Just sort of play in here and You know, just kind of something maybe like this. I don't know. Hey, again, going into the cross a bit because I want this to really look full and really cool when it's done like that.
I'm just sort of playing this value in. Just kind of hitting it here and there. Okay, now I'm gonna clean that off. And I wanna work some more now up in here because I feel like this kind of got a little bit messy. But again, all good because I'm gonna knock some of that back and it's no big deal. So I'm gonna take now some of this, this violet, a little bit of thalo blue. So see, yeah, I will use some thalo blue, but not much. I thought if I did use it, it wouldn't be much. And sure enough, it's what I thought. So right on with that. <laughs> so now let's get a little bit of light magenta into that. Just to sparkle that just a bit. Okay, so something like this. And I really just kind of want to knock back just a little bit of some of this here. And so, I don't know, do something. Let's see. I think a little bit more violet is what I may need on that. Let's try that. Okay, I didn't clean my brush. I'm just going back into violet. And maybe a little white to bring that up a bit to change that up. Okay, a little bit of phthalo blue to that. Not much. See, blue will take over if you're not careful. But I do want it in there, so let's see if I can get a little bit more white in there now. Okay, let's try that. Perhaps. Let's see. Oh yeah, something like this. I think that works right that. And so you just kind of let these effects happen here. And just kind of letting this stuff play, not covering it all up. Again, that motto here and there, but not everywhere. And See, I can really change up some stuff in here. See, so kind of do something maybe like that. And play some of this value in here, leaving some of that lavender alone maybe. Just wiping a lot of that paint off the brush there and just really want to fade this in. Okay, so something maybe like that. And I can even put some of that down in here a little bit too. Really brings that picture together a lot more. Okay, something like that. Okay. So, let's see. I'm going to go now more to some... Let's go with some yellow and a little bit of burnt umber to that. And just to darken that a bit. A little bit of titanium white, not much. I just kind of want to darken this just a bit and show some shadow just a little bit here and there on this. So, see so something like that, but can't really see it too well. So let me get just a little bit more burnt umber into that. Okay, let's try it this time. Oh yeah, see something like, maybe like that. 
Okay, so see, it adds a little bit of dimension and depth into there when I do that. Okay, and of course, don't want to cover all that up. Okay, something like that, maybe. I want to play now some more of this yellow in there. So I'm just going to take just a teeny bit of light magenta into this yellow. Actually, not much at all. Okay, and then I just want to tap this brush. Again, I don't want a whole lot of magenta, just barely. I'm making like a pin drop. See, I'm really tapping off a lot of that paint. And I want to come back in here now. And I want to leave some of this dark in here. I don't want to cover all of it up. But I do want to cover up some. And I want to bring this yellow down just a little bit. See over this darker stuff down here, but not much. can sort of fade this down and because yellow is so transparent that dark stuff will still show up just a little bit more okay so I'm just going into more yellow now I'm not picking up any other colors and I just kind of want to place it on the canvas I don't really want to blend too much because it's very transparent yellow is and I don't want to have it too faded so, okay, something like this. Uh, however, wherever, all good. So I'm picking up a little bit more paint because again, yellow is very transparent and I want to lay it down. And I'm just using very, very light pressure as I come on the outside of it. And I'm not, I'm not going to really spend too much time fading it in because again, with this transparency, it really won't show up a whole lot. Maybe something like that. Sort of smoothing these out just a little bit more here. Okay, something like that. Gives it a little bit more involvement with it and all that stuff. So now I'm going to add a little bit more magenta, or sorry, light magenta. It's important that I say which magenta it is, but you can also see which one I'm using. But yeah, light magenta, regular magenta. And let me just get a little titanium white in there. That makes it more opaque and not so transparent when I do that. Okay, and so I got this like orangey, peachy color going on. As I get over here, see, and then I can sort of do stuff like this. And then Okay, something like that, the clouds playing in there. And I wanna bring some of these down onto here, actually. See, like that. And I think what I wanna do now is get some of this magenta and some more of this light magenta. Okay, just tap in, mixing the color a little bit better there. And let's take now, and I want 
to go um, something like this, maybe. Just kind of do these little cloud shapes in here. See, maybe something like that. I don't know. However you want to place these. Okay, there's that, and then there's, there's this one here. See, just something like that. And then I'm also going to come back in and work some of that color back in and through here. something like that and maybe line some of them like that okay so grabbing some more of that and we'll go up here with that See, so however you want to do that. I'm going to take my number two natural flat brush here with all these little bristles here. This is going to really help to get in and line some of these because I want to sparkle some highlights now. So I'm going to take some titanium white now and I'm going to go into this same color here. See that? And I'm just tapping off a lot of that paint again. And I kind of want to go... sort of line just some of this and actually that's a little bit too much white there so I'm gonna grab a little bit more color into that not much though so see it's still lighter and see a little something like this and I can come in and Sparkle some of this up a little bit, just here and there, but not everywhere. See, something like this. See, just stuff like that. Okay, just little highlights. Just little sparkling little things. Show some light play. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit more white into this. Make it a little bit brighter here. Just here and there, but not everywhere. See that? Just little things like this. And that's all it takes. Just a little bit of white, and you got some sparkling, shiny, cool looking stuff.
Okay. All right, so with that same brush now, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take now some magenta, just a little tiny bit of cat orange, and let's see, a little bit of yellow into that. See, we got this nice light orangey color again. It's like peachy sort of color there. So I want to take now some of this and see, I can just with a dry natural flat brush, natural bristle flat brush that is, um, I can take now and I can use that to really make these cloud little liners here. See, just like that, I can line these clouds up really well with that. Okay, all good. And all right, so. So I can do this and sort of start to bring this picture more together here. And I just sort of stir this up as I bring it over into this darker lavender color here. See, and it just really comes together, you know, and just does what it should. As I just add more layers and blend more into each other and all that good stuff. So yeah. Super duper. Okay, and so now what I'd like to do is take just a little bit again of this peachy color. I'm gonna get a lot of that paint off the brush. I just want barely on the any on the brush here, and I kind of want to just lightly just kind of glaze over some of this like this yeah just gonna do something maybe like that just a little bit of light play in there a little bit okay and now, what I'll do is take a little of this magenta, a little bit of this light magenta, and I want to go back in here, and I don't want to cover all this up, but I just kind of want to do something like that. Okay, just maybe... A little bit. Okay, yeah, see? Little things like so. And very light pressure. I'm just kind of stirring this up and just sort of doing this. I'm going to go back to my number four natural round bristle brush. I'm going to take quite a bit of this yellow, actually all the rest of it, just a teeny, teeny, teeny touch. I mean, barely any at all of this, of this cat orange. And I'm going to go back in and mix that up into this yellow. And now some titanium white, a little bit more titanium white than that. Okay, something like this. Maybe a little bit more yellow. Okay, so something like that. And I just wanna go back in again. 
see so with yellow you got to have a few layers because it's just super transparent and i'm telling you it just it won't cover everything all at once the first time even the first couple times so at least three maybe four coats of yellow i would say is ideal if you really want to get yellow to show up really well so see i'm just kind of doing something like this and I'm just sort of just playing this in. See, and just kind of like that. And a little bit up into here. A little bit, maybe. So that's the cloud showing like that. And again, down this way and okay so once I get away from our light source which is going to be over here I want to change that value up a little bit and I want to get some magenta into that I'm sorry light magenta very important I'll let you guys know what magenta is which because if I just say magenta I'm talking about this red but if I say light magenta again we're talking about that pink color so you can see the value change on that when I add that light magenta in so as I come over here, see that it things really change up. Okay, so just kind of using my finger there and I'm gonna get some of that paint off the brush so it makes it easier to get that cloud effect going. See, in something like this. And I'll even place some of that over here a little bit, just to sort of blend that sort of together. So it makes it look like the light is kind of transitioning away and it's not this sudden, you know, value change. And that gives it more realistic and natural look to it that way. Okay, so yeah, something like that. I'm thinking, okay, so I'll even get that up into here a bit. Okay, maybe something like that, I don't know. Okay. Now, I wanna take just a little bit more of that color and I wanna sort of play that just a little bit here and there but not everywhere and sort of kind of encase this yellow a little bit with it. Just sort of blend that around. Okay. So maybe some more of that down in here. Okay. Sort of using this now to sort of settle down and blend some of this out. And to soften it a little bit and take out some of those hard sort of rough edges and lines and all that and just make it more smooth and more soft like clouds, you know, like how, how clouds are. So let's see. I think I'll take some of this red actually now and go into some of this violet. Let's see what I get with that. Maybe a little bit of this. And Come in here with some of that, maybe. Yeah, maybe something like that, yeah. Okay, something's like something like so maybe okay yeah and I'll come in with some of that over here okay a little of that there maybe a little bit right here 
Yeah, so a little, just a little stuff, yeah. Okay, something like that. And maybe some of that around here. Just sort of playing this value around, just sort of using it again to blend some things and all of that. Okay. And I kind of want to make this more orangey over here because I don't want it the same yellow as over here. So I'm going to transition that just a little bit more than that. So I'm going to take some magenta, some of this orange. Okay, a little white. There we go. I want to play more of this kind of a color right over here. And yeah, something more like this. Because again, as we get away from our light source over here, it's not so yellow over in this side. It's more, you know, so I'm going to just sort of fade this out into over here a little bit. See, just kind of like that. Just kind of let these colors fade together. See, something like that. And again, I want to come up top with some of that and just sort of enhance just a little bit more of that over this. Maybe a little bit of that under here. But yeah, something like that. All right, I'm gonna clean this brush now. And I wanna start adding some really bright spots here and there. So to do that, what I wanna do is take just a teeny, teeny bit of yellow, like that's it. And mostly titanium white. Okay, tapping that off and Just kind of do something like this. I'm going to really sparkle up some of this, this really light areas. Okay, and then have some of this come in over here. Okay, that's really going to sparkle and shine this up big time. And this is what I want to do now is start really showing where our light source is going to be. Okay, so let's see, right in here maybe, yeah. Like that. Ain't that something. See, it's really starting to come alive now. It's starting to really shine up. And... Right in here especially. This is going to be where our sun's going to be, so I won't do all this at once, but it's really going to be involved there. Okay, and also right in here. Some light. This is like where direct light's just really, I mean, zooming out of this thing. And look, just... Um, Maybe even over here, we're talking like some light sneaking in right there, and maybe right there, yeah, okay, down here a little bit maybe, I don't know, don't get too carried away though, because if, if you put this white everywhere and in too many places, it will really take away the contrast and the bright effect of how light's really zinging off. Uh, you know, really infiltrating this picture. It will kill that effect if you put it too many places. So definitely don't put it, it's very here and there, but not everywhere for sure. Let's just say that. Okay, and then right up in here. Oh, 
Okay. Maybe a little bit in some of these areas. I can sparkle that up maybe a bit. Okay, something like that maybe. Yeah, so that's really shining that up good. Okay. All right, booyah. I'm liking it. All right, so now what I want to do is go back to my number 12 angle brush here. And now I want to go ahead and take those same colors, burnt and raw umber together, and some permanent black. See, so just these colors and black. See, something very dark, a very dark brown. And I'm gonna come in here now, and again, I'm gonna, this is gonna be in front of, of all this wonderful sunrise of course but I want to cover back over and it's really gonna push this sky back behind it and it's really gonna pop off of this thing so well so this is really gonna get good now and of course it's a second layer on top so it's gonna be even more full and more defined this way no transparencies at all, so that's cool. Okay, and... A very hard, distinct line has its silhouetting off of here, because that's really, really important. You don't want anything fuzzy here on these lines at all, so a little bit of water helps. For me, I can get away with this wet weather here in the tropics and I don't have to use water all the time so I kind of have that going for me but definitely get some water if you need it if you live somewhere super dry okay so let me go ahead and just I'll take this up fill in. See, I got the edge of this angle brush. It really helps to get in these small corner areas and really get these precise angles and these edges really well and get those nice crisp lines. Super awesome. Okay, something like that. And let's see. I can... You can always thicken the line, but not too thick, of course. You don't want to go into your you don't want to go into your sun sunrise or sunset, whatever you're calling it. Um, you know, too much because then, of course, that dark. I'm telling you, you got to really spend some time covering it up and matching it with your sunset again. All the colors you put down to cover it up as you do it, so. Definitely some areas that you really want to be careful in when it comes to painting. I mean, you can, in a way, make it difficult in that way, in some aspects. So, I yeah, just want to be, just be careful in that. That's why I say these brushes are really ideal for this. And of course, if you have a nice flat brush without the edges all frayed out, then, of course, that's where that, that works, too. I just like the slope on these brushes, because like I said, when I really want to get into corners, all these other brushes are out of my way when I can just use the tip. And I find that it's easier at that point. All right, at this point, at this point, <laughs> to uh, really get in there and not have those other bristles to sort of contend with and get in your way and that, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, just gonna use this again. So see that edge, that tip. Just 
super duper precise and very clean. I love it. Okay, so I kind of want to come up here and just sort of thicken this just a little bit more. See, I don't want it smaller per se than that. And that left side, I want the right side here to sort of match up. Okay, something like that. All good. Okay. So it kind of looks, yeah. Just a teeny bit of water, not much. I don't need a lot. I said I live where it's kind of wet, so too much water for me will render a very transparent kind of a watercolor look, and I don't want that. I want this very solid, very solid and popping off of this guy with a very distinct line against that awesome lit up sky here. See, and sometimes you can turn your painting if you need to. And if that helps to make it easier, then you can just go right up to the line, see, like this. And really get that nice, straight, crisp line. So yeah, if your ergonomics are not favorable to you, definitely turn your painting. That's what I'm doing. It's all good. Don't let anything in your head tell you, oh, the wall... You know, to be a good painter, man, you just, good painters don't turn their paintings. They deal with it. Well, whatever. I'm a painter that likes to get it done and have it work for me. <laughs> so whatever the rules are or may have been, this is what they are now. <laughs> so I'm doing what I got to do. This is what works. In the end, I want my painting to... To turn out and be really really something that I can appreciate later and of course uh, because this is for my good friend Brad I want him to appreciate it most of all and Brad thank you for your interest in my ability to do paintings and I'm glad that you dig my art man it means a lot to me and this is for you and everyone else this is also for you but specifically this painting is going directly to like I said my friend Brad and I just want to give him a shout out again and say thank you so much your appreciation and support means so so much and I so appreciate that and of course, everyone else following and watching, I so appreciate you just the same. And thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, so I'm just gonna bring this uh, dark value down into that and check that out. I mean, it's like, there it is. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do now. I'm going to fill the rest of the bottom in let that dry for a little bit because I want to take some sunlight onto this a little bit where it's like really popping off and really get some cool effects on there. So I don't want those effects to mix with this fresh paint that I put. And then because acrylic paints dry pretty quickly, I'm just going to let that dry as I fill in the rest of this. And for that, I'm going to take my larger number 10 flat brush here. It covers more ground so much better that way. And I'm going to go with those same dark colors. Just mix them all up. Boom, boom, boom. Wham. Just fill it all in. Just like that. All good. Okay. Okay. 
And I do want to do some rock stuff, you know, so I do want some sort of hard lines here. So I'm just going to just kind of meander that over and down, however you want to do it. Just kind of leaving some of this, you know, these curves and bumps for some rock indication is to show some landscape stuff. Okay, anything you want to do, it's all good. This is your painting. You can make this however you guys want to do it, of course. Just kind of, you know, show a little, I don't know, maybe you can do something like that even. So look, you can always change it and if you want to do that. See, it just kind of adds interest, really brings it all, brings it alive that way. Okay, so I don't want this showing really. It's extra line here. Okay, there we go. And as you can see with dark value, I don't really need a second coat on there because this first coat, man, I mean, dark values really get it done. Not much to it at all. It's just the first coat and it's looking pretty filled in nice. Okay, so again, you want some water on the brush so that you can do these crisp lines because again, that makes a really nice pop against this uh, bright sky when you have those crisp lines against there, really silhouetting, really nice against that, and it's really a nice uh, contrast and really good way to draw the eyes in when you do it that way. So with fuzzy lines, it's too subtle looking. And of course, if you want to make a background blurry, then of course make the lines fuzzy because fuzzy is what makes everything look blurry and out of focus. And if you'd like, I got some videos, and you've probably seen them already, but if not, I do have a, quite a selection on Boca Out of Focus paintings, if you'd like to check those out, and I show the techniques and how to make those effects happen using fuzzy lines and just how they go together with everything to give a realistic uh, impression, like you need glasses when you're looking at it kind of thing. But yeah, it's a different type of painting, and... Me, I love variety. I don't like doing the same stuff over and over because, yeah, variety is the spice of life, and I really enjoy the mix-up of things. It keeps things fresh and from plateauing and the journey alive, and really it allows you to learn a host of different things and get better and really be well-rounded in so many different things. But again, most importantly have fun. And if you like doing the same thing over and over and that's your thing, do that because you want to enjoy the journey. That's the biggest thing of all. Okay. So here we go. And what I'm going to do now over here is I'm going to give a little, you can see that I sort of left some of these broken lines to show some brush and all that, but I'll get in here a little bit more and demonstrate how I do that. So I'm going to take my number two flat brush, my natural flat brush, because again, it has these bristles that are like frayed out. And here comes the rain again. Rain is awesome. It makes this place lush and grow all kinds of tropical fruit. Super awesome. So anyway, uh, let's see, I'm going to take that dark value again with this natural flat number two brush. And I'm going to sort of tap on it because I kind of want to open up these bristles a little bit see how it's all irregular and now see I don't want a flat you know flat uh, edge I want them all frayed out so that I can then go watch this Do stuff like this see see it gets it just really creates this nice brush effect okay so I'm gonna take some more water now a little bit more water than usual because as I do this I want crisp lines again even as I do this, I don't want these fuzzed out and frayed out. I want them looking like crisp, silhouetted, you know, things happening, push indications. See, just kind of like this. However, just tap them in randomly, turn the brush. What you don't want to do is turn and then turn it while it's against the canvas because then you'll smear them out. So turn it in the air and then tap, come up, turn it again, tap, 
turn it maybe a quarter time and then maybe 360, I don't know, just randomly turn it in different positions and you'll get all of these different sort of things happening here. So, see, just kind of like that, however you want to do this. Okay, just something over there maybe, yeah. And then maybe, maybe there's a little bit, I don't know, right there. It's all good, however. Okay. So something like that. And then here's what I want to do now. Now I want to, I'm going to take my, well, actually, no, you know what? I'm going to take my, what is this? My number eight <laughs> filbert brush. I had to look. The, the, the number is really small. I had to really look at that. I almost needed a magnifying glass. But anyways, I've got this filbert brush, and I'm going to go in here now and put some little rock indications. And to do that, I'm going to take just a little bit of titanium white now into this. Let's see, so we got a lighter value of stuff now. It gives it this light gray color. And I'm just going to... I'm not going to worry about how neat again. You can cover anything up with this dark value if you don't like something. It's all good. Really go for this. I'm telling you, this is going to be really cool. So I'm going to make another plan in here and push this little uh, brush indication back and show some 3D dimension on this rock. So watch. I'm going to go kind of like this. See that? And I'm just kind of sort of play this in here just kind of irregularly. Not really worried again how neat it is. I can always cover something if I don't like it. But yeah, check it out. I can smooth out some of this stuff and just really come in with this rock stuff. See, and it gives me the indication of some of this. And right by and by that rock detail, I can actually show where the cross is kind of put into the ground right here. And um, really just play this in here. Super awesome like this, see? And how about that? You just kind of dance this around, however. Don't even worry about it. Just let it do what it wants to do. Get crunk with it, man. Take whatever you want and cover it up if if you don't like something take that dark value and like you can add crevices in here and just do all kinds of cool stuff so i'm gonna take now check it out i'm gonna take now a little bit more white i'm gonna make some uh, some highlights pop here and there check it out i can go boom 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 see that that really shows some rock in there details i can do it like this like that see just whatever. Isn't that cool? Just you can put them here and there and not everywhere. And it really just brings out more dimension and depth that way. And I can, you know, I'm telling you, you can do whatever you want with this. Anything, anytime you want. Boom. See, I can show some rocks, some ledges. I don't know. Maybe those are some steps right here going up to where maybe Jesus had to carry his cross, you know, before he got crucified and the guy that was helping him. Um, if you've read the Gospels, you know, there was that story where he had to go up and carry his own cross up there. And Anyway, um, yeah, so whatever you want to do. You know, just add however. So maybe I will make them steps, see, like that little irregular, just kind of thrown around a little bit, maybe. I don't know, it's all rough and rugged up here. Definitely had to go through some rough, physically rough times, you know, rough terrain here while carrying that heavy cross.
Okay, something like that. I don't know. I like that. I didn't even plan for this, to be honest. I just was thinking, you know, I'm going to add some highlights on some rocks. And as I started doing this, I thought, you know, yeah, that may be the, that may be the steps uh, of where the Lord did go up to carry that cross before he got nailed to it. See, like that. Super, super duper awesome, man. You can do whatever you want. You tell your own story, however, you know, whatever the story is that you want to paint here. Is it a sunset, a sunrise? Is this where the steps were? Were there any steps? Maybe there were no steps. Maybe he had to climb over all this rock after all, and there was no help at all. I don't know. But whatever, you know, what's being put on your heart, and however you want to express your painting, go for it. Okay, so whatever, just like I said, however you want to do this, it's all good. Landscapes, I tell you, is very freeing and very freestyle. You can get away with so much with landscapes, all the clouds, you know, whatever you want to do. Super cool. Okay. So what I like to do now, this is, you know, pretty dry for the most part. Um, dry enough anyways. I'm going to make our sun indication about uh, right in here and have the sun rays kind of hitting this cross and really zinging off of things. But uh, before I do that, actually, I almost forgot. I want to add some 3D dimension to this cross now. And... In order to do that, I'm going to take my number two flat brush here, and I'm going to take some of this orange and some of this burnt umber, and I want to take a little white to that, and a little cad yellow, actually, because that's sort of going to warm it up just a bit. Okay, see something like this. And what I want to do is I want to make this little strip here come down, see like this. And as you can see, it gives it a three-dimensional look. Isn't that nice? Just a little, see that's what I mean, value changes. They really tell the story about what's going on. And in this case, it tells us now that this cross is, you, you can see the, the thickness of it a little bit. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and play this same value right down here. I hope you guys can see that there. I'm trying to move out of the way sideways with my hand to get that angle for you guys. And I really want to bring this down. See, kind of like that. And if I want to make it show up just a little bit more, I can add, okay, just a little titanium white if I want to to that. And see, I can add a little titanium white and I can get that lighter brown and let's see how this does. Oh yeah, that's much better. See, just like that. Now we've got a, a 3D cross here. You can see all of its dimension like that, yeah. Okay, and then for the sake of reflective light, usually sometimes when light hits a certain way, you have a little blue sometimes on some wood. So I'm gonna take some phthalo blue, believe it or not. I know that sounds kind of weird. And a little bit of this burnt umber to it. That's uh, a little bit too much burnt umber. Let's see, maybe something like 
that, yeah. Okay, something like this. It's kind of a Payne's gray in a way. So now, let's see, I wanna take and put that Just kind of like that, see? So we've got ourselves a nice 3D cross going on now. And now let's go with our sun. And I'm going to use my number four natural round bristle brush because of course with it being round and small, I can make a nice circular um, shape with that. So I'm actually, you know what I did? I ran out of yellow just a little bit. So I'm gonna take some more yellow no, actually, not a whole lot, just more or less what I need here. And I'm going to take some yellow now and some titanium white. Okay, just to, and the titanium white really is just so I can make it more opaque so that it um, doesn't, it's not so transparent. So because white is so opaque, it's going to really help this yellow lay down better and really be in there like it should in a solid way. Okay, just gonna go like that. And I'm gonna go kind of like this. Okay, that's our sun right there. And I don't wanna go white all at once, of course, because then It'll kind of, I want to give this glow to the sun and then I want to put some white in the middle to really make that shine really bright. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take just a little bit of orange now, just a touch of raw, I'm sorry, see it did it again, burnt umber, <laughs> burnt umber. And that's going to go into the yellow, the yellow, the orange, what's wrong with me? The orange. So, I'm going to add some white to that, see, and I just kind of want a little bit of a glow. I'm going to add a little yellow into that, in fact, as well. And this is really going to make the difference on whether or not this looks like a really bright shine from the sun or just some, like, you know, bright spot in the painting. So, definitely want to go my number four natural bristle brush again and there's no water on this brush very dry and very light pressure I'm just gonna go around the outside of this yellow that I did see kind of like this and I'm gonna have some of that hit on the cross right here because this is gonna really be zinging off of this really really awesome and making this bright glow of a sun that we got going on here See, just like that. See, something sort of like this, and I'll go ahead and make that a little bit more distinct here. So again, I'm just getting it on there. Just getting it on there. Not really doing anything just yet. Okay, and what I want to do now is uh, clean this brush like I did and really dry it out. I want it super dry. And now I just want to take pure titanium white, just a little bit. And I want to go in the very center. And as I, I just, uh, I want to go and drag it out. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to drag it out here and then go back into the center without cleaning this first and reloading it. And of course, making this dry first before I do that, because I'll drag some of this other paint back into it. And of course, if I go back in here and start blending again, it'll just blend that white out and it won't really shine. It'll just kind of go back to where it was. So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to take it on the outside here. Just kind of like that. Okay. And I can actually dry this brush off on my hand. Okay, I'm going to reload some more white. And I'm going to go one time again. And 
I'm going to go outside like this. And I really want to get out here. See this like that. Okay, a little bit more yellow. I'm sorry, orange, just a teeny bit of orange. And now some yellow. Okay. And right out here. really want to have this sun pop and shine so well. So let's see, I'm going to get more white. And let's go back in now and Okay, a little bit more yellow, a little bit more white. So I'm gonna build this up. This will take a few times, but again, we're going against dark. See, this is what I mean about dark and then when you put light over it. So that's just an example of how you wanna be careful when you bring out darks into around light, light areas. But in this case, I wanted it this way because I want it to sort of show the sun behind and sort of hitting the cross in this way. So. Okay, just kind of want to bring this light value down here like this as that really shows the sun zinging off of it like that. Okay. Uh, cleaning that brush again and I want to take now again my number two natural bristle brush I really want to clean this off and let's see I want to take some cad orange some cad yellow a little touch of the burnt umber And some titanium white now. A little bit more orange to that, actually. Okay, something like this. So I get that nice glow color there. And I really want to come up here Actually, let me get a little bit more orange involved in that. And a little bit more yellow, actually, into it. Okay, maybe something like... Something like this, maybe, yeah. And... going to just sort of barely touch the canvas. I want to be able to see through this in a way. See, it's going to kind of give this nice 
glow and zing to it now. Okay, okay, just getting the layers out there for now. And now, what I want to do is take a little titanium white now. Just a little titanium white, a little cad yellow to that. Okay, just kind of something, you know, just put it over here, just so I can mix it like that. And I'm going to go back over the top of this. Sort of do something like this, right? Have that sort of leave out like that. something like that and let's get a little bit more cad yellow and sort of want to hit the outside here Okay, and here's what I want to do too. I want to take some more of that dark color because I kind of went too far in, but that's okay. See, what I mean is you can totally take, and I can barely, you know, come over this just a little bit, see, like this, and add some of that back in. Okay. No big deal. Just push stuff back if it's if it becomes too much. No big deal. Okay. So we're starting to see a little thing happening here, a little something. And let me go ahead now and get just pure titanium white. And I'm gonna put that right in here. Okay, I'm going to wipe the rest of the uh, paint off the brush. I'm just going to drag this out. And I'm going to fade it into this other stuff out here. See, like this. And with this other color around it, it's going to really help to pop and shine it and give it that, you know, that nice glow to it. See, just like this. Okay, something like that. Okay, so a little bit more white now. shines that out. 
Okay. And I'm just going to keep building this up. Okay, just like that. And just kind of pulling it out and sort of making that happen there. I can even use my finger to sort of do that to it. And again, back to my number two natural flat brush. And I can come in here and settle back some of this with that dark value again with the cross here. Let's see, and I can See, just sort of knock some of this back a bit. It's all good. See, so it looks like rays, rays are shining. And I can even go into some more of this yellow and some of that orange. Yeah, and I can right in here Just really, just barely, 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 just very lightly. Just kind of do this. All right, something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna clean that number two natural flat brush off, rinse it again. And I'm going to take now, once again, just a little yellow and a little white. Okay, not much. Just a teeny bit of paint on the brush. And I want to come back in here and sort of do something like this. Just take those rays up and... Kind of do something like that. Okay, maybe something like that. And for the heck of it, I want to get these little sunspots that are kind of showing up over here because that kind of really brings the light in a little bit more, if you know what I'm saying. So... To do that, I'm going to take just barely any paint on my brush, and for that, I'm going to take just a little bit of this violet color here and a little white, very, very, very light, and barely any paint on the brush. I mean, just barely any. And I want to sort of do this. See that? It kind of gives it this little impression here. This is going to help infiltrate this picture just a little bit more in that regard. And also, also what I want to do is take just a little bit of this orange and this white. Yeah, just a teeny bit. Look at that. Just barely any at all. Okay. And I want to come down here. Actually, I need a little bit more orange than that. Just a little bit. Not much. 
okay and see this right here I just kind of want to take this down and just kind of again show some light just kind of hitting this see kind of like that let's see I'll take a little bit more orange into that and I'm just kind of glaze it over. I don't want to really cover over this. I just kind of want to glaze it down. Let's see, and I can sort of show that. And then also right in here. See, very dry brush. I'm just glazing this down. See, kind of like that. Then you get this nice light zing going on. See, just kind of something like so. See, like that. All good. And I think one more time. I'm going to take now some white one more time. And I really want to sparkle this up. I want to show some pure white. And I'll just barely, barely drag it out and just kind of do this number. Okay, something like that. Lights are sneaking in over here, maybe. Okay. There, something like that. Okay, got out of hand just a little bit, but that's okay. So maybe just now a little bit more yellow, a little bit more orange maybe. Okay. And just kind of hitting the rest out here. Okay, more titanium white. something like that I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and take my script liner brush now lots of water titanium white and as I pull it to load it very well I'm gonna pull it through and turn it and it comes to a nice point and I think I'm going to sign maybe right here so I want to thank you guys so much for all your support and for following and joining me if you dig my art and these lessons, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on any of the video lessons I'll be putting out on a regular basis. And with that said, I want to ask for you guys to drop any questions or comments down below. If you have them, I'd love to hear from you guys. 
And there it is, the resurrected cross, or the resurrected Lord from the cross, I should say. He is risen. And until next time, happy painting, everyone.